What's up champions? As you know, I'm a big fan of foiling and lately I've been using a system called foil drive to automate my foiling gear. It's super fun in the waist, but you know, there is a big problem with it. It's called drag. Did you know that the amount of drag generated by this cable and the duct tape over here is much bigger than the actual drag of the whole motor itself? It's not a big deal if you're a lightweight rider, but if you're a heavy rider like me, you're really limited with the choices of your wings. For this reason, I can only use really big wings, otherwise I will not lift at all. However, finally we have a solution. It's called Project Cedras. This is a cooperation of foil drive, which makes a fully integrated mast. Take a look, guys. You have three options here, 70, 80 or 90 centimeters mast, and you can tell foil drive guys where exactly to put your pot and the motor. The cable is going inside the mast, eliminating up to 80% of drag. The pot itself is smaller and more hydrodynamic as well. The end of the mast allows you to choose different adapters. You can ask full drive guys which adapter you're gonna need. For example, you can choose between lift adapters, axis adapters, Takuma, Armstrong and so on. Now, the million dollar question what the position of the motor you should choose. The problem is, once you decide the position, there is no way to change it. That's the one and only drawback of the project Cedrus. It's a set and forget system. Once you decide the position of the motor, you cannot choose it later. So choose wisely. There is no right or wrong answer to this question. Some people prefer to put the motor as close to the board as possible to have the most of the gliding experience on the waves. For example, about 10-12 cm from the board. Other people suggest to put around 24-26 to 26 cm like this. As for me, I prefer about 35 cm, which gives me more freedom to ride in the tropic conditions in the ocean. And of course, some people, especially lightweight riders and those who use it with kids on the lake without waves, prefer to put it right here near the wings, like on e-foil. As for the length of the mast, I would suggest to go with the middle option, 80 cm for the best all-around experience. As for the length of the cable, choose the longest one, 200 cm, which lets you position the box on the nose of the board, which is the best choice for the small prone boards like I have. Finally, to reduce the extra drag, you can switch from the coiled leash, which always flaps around, gets in the way and gets stuck in the legs, into the new reeled leash. I asked different e-foilers for the experience with the real leash and everybody loved it. Finally, it's very important after each ride in the salty water to take out the motor cover like so. It's just a magnet. Then flash everything inside with the fresh water and finally spray with WD-40 to avoid the salt and the rust kicking in. There you have it, everything is ready to go. Let's go to the water and compare the drag. Whew. Here we go. The board I'm going to use in this experiment is 4.6 55 liter lift plus board. After I proved myself that I can ride ridiculously small 30 liter prone boards, I am now more focused on comparing different wings and see which wings I can ride instead of trying to struggle with really small boards which create a lot of drag by itself. 55 liter is still quite a small board, especially for a heavy rider like me, so don't get me wrong, it's still hard, but it's significantly easier to lift up with a bigger board. Now I saw a lot of talks about that foil drive is just assist for the wave and some people are getting angry when I call it e-foil. Well, let's not get into the terminology, but let's be clear here, you can still e-foil with it. As you can see, I'm riding here completely on the flat area, there is now a wave here pushing me. Yes, you can e-foil it and you can go up to 20 minutes with one battery, which is really good for the battery, which is so small. And now with the Project Cedras mast, it's even easier, with less drag, you have a little bit more battery life, which is really important. To, to best describe my experience with Project Cedras, let me give you an analogy. It feels like you instantly drop 10 kilograms of the dead weight. It's like you lost extra weight and now you really go effortlessly. For me, in the past, 
if oiling was a real struggle, it's really a lot of drag generated by the motor that is so wide, so long. No matter what you do, you really get a lot of struggle getting through the water, especially on the e-fold that is 30-35 kilograms. With this setup, especially with the Project Cedrus, once the least little motor is out of the water, it's completely drag-free foiling. It's really a true foiling experience. And this setup pumps extremely well. I'm riding PNG 1010, my favorite wing as usual. If your legs are strong, you can pump really long without any drag whatsoever. Super fun ride. Each session lasts about 20 minutes, after which I'm so tired, I need a break. I go out of the water, get some water, change the batteries, and then I go again. And it's quite easy to change the batteries. Take a look. Look, it's a tutorial how to change the battery, okay? Guys, are you ready? Yeah. First we need to open it. Now we need to disconnect an old battery. Now we need to take old battery out. Now we need to get what? New one. New one? Very good, student. Now Melissa, what we need to do? Put it inside. Okay, we put it inside. The blue. And now what do we need to do? Close it up. Connect it. And now close it up. Yeah. The new battery one. New battery, yeah, 100 percent. It yeah. got all the new. Very good. And now? The red paper. And now I can go again huh? to the water. Very fast. Wow guys, the first impressions are really unbelievable. I think finally my foiling experience is changing from the try-hard struggle to a true no-drag foiling experience thanks to Project Cedras. The bottom line, if you can afford it, definitely go for this extra upgrade, you will not regret it. And now I decided to meet another foiler who is using foil drive to hear his pro tips on using this system. Meet Eras. And here we have Eras. He's a professional foiler and today I would like to hear his tips on his progression with foiling. Eras started with e-foil, then you progressed to foil drive and finally you are going prone foiling. How was your journey? Alright, thanks to be here. Eras is my name and I'm a foiler. Um, I began uh, with e-foiling, yes. It was a big, big fun for the first two weeks or one month. You have big fun in the water, uh, but then you, if you want to progress and pump, then it's hard because you have 30 kilograms under you that's hard to pump. So I was looking for something different, something lighter. And then I found foil drive. All the gear is now about 10 to 12 kilograms. You've been pumping really hard and you even won the Wake Thief Award for longest pumping, yes? How long was your pumping? Uh, the Wake Thief gives the, the hat for... Uh, if you sent him a video about uh, one minute pumping, so I managed the uh, one minute uh, with a, with a dog start. And what wing are you going to use with Paul Drive? Uh, I normally, I only use the 1150 from Axis. 1150 PNG? Yeah, 1150 PNG. And I have the 460 back wing. Mm -hmm. So that's the wing that you use for longest pumping, yeah? Yes, I think that's a great uh, wing for for pumping. Um, you don't need a much uh, starting uh, velocity. I tried other wings that are the same surface and surface area. And this one is the, uh, the most effective that I tried. It, it, had a, it is down, a, if you look down, it's a little bit cur curved. I think that makes it different. It slows it maybe down, but it, um, it's a very good uh, front thing for pumping, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And the position of foil drive on the mast 
and the box in, is in front of the board, yeah? For you, keep it higher. I changed the part a little bit. I took away this part and put the rubbers so I can change it in the water. So it's movable and adjustable. It's adjustable in the water, yes. And which position is the best for you? Um, it depends a little bit on the waves. If the waves are stronger, I put it more up. You know? If the uh, waves are slow, uh, smaller, they don't give so much power, they put it more down and I'm more, more often in the, in, the, in the water with the, with the motor. I learned pumping with this motor. I, I use the, not the plus, I use the normal uh, foil drive assist. On here. You, but I began like e-foiling. I put it very down and then I just e-foiled and I had fun. And, and then week for week, I put it a little bit more up, up, up until I came to 22 centimeter. With, um, on flat water, even if it's flat water, it's possible to pump with that. You, you lay on the board and um, you with your throttle and then you try to knee and set up and get on foil. You can push a little bit with your belly um, and you, you get on foil. And then you feel if you get too higher, then the motor comes out of the water, so you get slower. So you have to be as fast as possible with the motor in the water. But if the motor is near to the board, it's hard to, because you don't have much space to move up and down. Mm -hmm. So the higher you put the, the foil drive, the, the harder it is to get velocity, but the easier later to pump. That, that means it is a progression and uh, you have to play around with it. And then when you, when you fast, then you, um, the, with the foil drive in the water, in flat water, then you make your last push out and then you're out of the water. Uh, the foil drive doesn't help you any, anymore. And then you have to pump. And that's the way how I learned it. And I think it's one of the most effective possibilities are uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes because uh, if you don't have a friend with a boat this is your friend <laughs> <laughs> okay and finally people use different techniques to get started some start on the flat some use the power of the swell combined with full drive some use like flapping with the legs so dolphin kick or they start on the knees which is the most effective way to launch to lift up in the start the spoil dry. I I try to be uh, far as fast as possible, but um, as the foil comes out in the same moment or same time, I, I get up um, first on my knee and then stand up. In the beginning, it's you you to learn it. We make uh, smaller steps forward, one step after other, and later it will be automatically in one movement. Oh, yeah. So. Do you paddle also or no paddling? No, I, I, I didn't paddle because I have the remote yeah. remote in the hand. But um, I'm thinking now about I, I, I would be interested in that uh, because the the uh, the paddlers uh, who have the, uh, the remote in the hand, they can paddle and give throttle, and that's a big uh, advantage. And I want to have find a um, possibility. Uh, to to paddle and use the remote. I saw a video from a guy who makes it with his mouth. Oh yeah. And maybe that's maybe I yeah I'm thinking about doing maybe the same. So do you try to start on the flat area or do you start already into the white wash with foil drive? Uh, not in the white wash. No, I I start outside mm -hmm. where the uh, waves don't uh, don't break. <laughs> Okay, the same as I do. And finally, how many batteries do you have? And how many you recommend for people? I have four batteries, but I have this, the, the normal foil drive assist. Um, one battery lasts, if you, if you give all the time throttle, I'm 65 kilograms. If you default throttle 20 minutes, if, if you pump more than maybe 30 minutes with a normal um, old uh, battery, not a plus. Mm -hmm. 
All right, and I'm very heavy rider, I'm 85. So for me, this small 30 liter board is just barely enough to get started. So I'm very interested to see how you ride this small, small board with your light weight. So let's go to the water and see how it goes. All right? All right, thanks, guys. Let's go.